most important in the making of nature-based solutions might actually be upscaling. The discourse of nature-based solutions mainly focuses on individual interventions which have the power to change the quality of living and the quality of the spaces in which we live. Until this extent, we might be capable to directly perceive the added values. But the power of nature-based solutions is actually much greater. To accomplish this, this video will discuss how to upscale, to network nature-based solutions to an urban, regional and metropolitan level. If we succeed in upscaling, nature-based solutions are capable of improving the quality of life, also from a regional metropolitan point of view. As cities are the most complex forms of settlements which man has built in the course of our cultural development, we could say that just like the human body, the city has a metabolism. For the human body, the main purposes of metabolism are the conversion of food to energy and to building blocks and the elimination of waste in order to grow, reproduce, maintain structure and respond to the environment. In terms of regional metabolism, na nature-based solutions and the city aim to set the life-sustaining flows, focusing on energy, materials, water and waste, and address the restoration of natural cycles by establishing a network connecting green and blue through the urban environment. This framework sets the performance and allows us to assign the spaces which have the potential to change in time towards a contributing role. The added value of seeing these spaces within a network theoretically comes from landscape ecology. Landscape ecology is the science studying and improving the interactions between ecological processes and the environment, and particular ecosystems. Landscape ecology sees the landscape as a mosaic consisting of patches and corridors, with each uh, come with a different approach. Patches are areas with a homogeneous land use type, and corridors can be recognized as linear elements. A river is, for instance, a blue corridor, and a highway, it's a grey corridor. Organisms need patches of a specific size for, for instance, breeding and feeding, and they need corridors to migrate to other patches. This network and its connectivity facilitate a natural system to function. Within the context of landscape ecology, we, we aim for highly connected landscapes, so we aim for more corridors rather than fragmented patches. There are different degrees of connectivity to be recognized. Cogn cog cognitivity is high in untouched places, but lower within the productive landscape of cities. We can, for instance, see patches of green and blue, which are not connected, but they are aligned. The land use types in between the patches can either facilitate the movement of fauna and flora or block the exchange. Fields of grass with patches of forest in between could, for instance, still be read as a corridor, whereas a highway will function as a barrier. If that's the case, we need to see how space in between the patches can be retrofitted to shape a corridor between them. Therefore, we look at land use types and building density. Within cities, however, potential can be found in the road network system. Roads are grey corridors which could provide space for green and blue elements. The sections of streets show us the available space for implementing green and blue on the sidewalks, within private-owned front yards, or by integrating a so-called eco-duct. If there is no space available around the roads, we can look into the space that is occupied by the road itself to see if changes in the traffic scheme can be made to provide space for the integration of green and blue. For instance, by changing towards more calm, traf uh, calm traffic and slower types of mobility or perhaps even deviate traffic via other roads and or tunnels. The importance of straightening the network for biodiversity is evident, especially within cities as they allow birds, insects and other animals to move throughout the city. But what exactly is the added value of upscaling to networks and increased connectivity for us humans? Now, the presence of green and blue patches and corridors has strong aesthetic value and provides us with recreational space, health and coherence in urban design. The value of the network and the connectivity of this green and blue infrastructure for us comes with a special perception, spatial perception and recognition. 
As we navigate through space, we recognize elements that provide us with a sense of place, scale, harmony, and structure. The more uniform a space is shaped, the easier it is to navigate and the easier it is to recognize landmarks and how the built environment works. The, the presence of green can, for instance, adjust and control the sense of scale and dimension as it, is, for instance, allow us to distinguish main roads from side streets and provide homogeneity, just like the steadily Par Parisian facades can. This way, the connectivity between green features create an additional aesthetic layer to the structure of space. The second important value of a network of nature-based solutions can be found in the flexibility and robustness a network creates for region. To implement nature-based solutions within the region, spread network brings the scale closer up to the scale of the catchment and facilitates the balancing of pressures on the full system and the distribution of risk. In case of any disruptions in the system, different forms of connectivity allow the system to distribute the pressure to other locations in case of need and will limit cascading effects and collapse on system's functionality. In terms of blue, taking the example of the discharge of stormwater, it makes sense that well-connected networks has the power to distribute pressures and alleviate locations when necessary. In terms of green, the concept of network and connectivity mainly discusses the access to green spaces and the opportunity to maintain daily activities. Regions globally have standards of the access to green space radio within a certain amount of time. Even when we don't often go running or walk your dog, the presence and proximity of green as a network has value. The ultimate goal of the upscaling of nature-based solutions is for network to be recognized on a similar level as streets are recognized. The street network in cities is mostly overlaid within a network of electricity, provision and water discharge of which we naturally understand their importance. Green and blue infrastructure are not yet considered as such. Only when green and blue infrastructures become visible on the larger scales, this will become part of our sense of space.